Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn, and I'm here in Oyster Bay, Long Island at the Planting Fields Arboretum. This is one of the most exquisite parks here in New York, and we are getting a behind the scenes tour at both their conservatories and the Arboretum. So welcome to this week's episode of Plant One On Me, Field Trip Edition. <laughs> So why don't you just tell me your name and your position? My name is Michael Runkel. I'm the assistant director of the Arboretum. I, my main responsibilities is uh, the horticulture end, so essentially the director of horticulture. And when did you take on that position? I started the beginning of December of 2017, so still pretty new, kind of filling the place out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but it's a, it's a, I would imagine it's a huge role too, because it's, um, this is a, it's a big place, the planting fields. Yes, it's uh, 409 acres of very diverse collections of woody plants, and then we also have about two and a half acres under glass, uh, conservatory space and our camellia house. When I first came here, I was just blown away by how beautiful this whole area is, and I was just like, oh, if I only lived a little bit closer, I'd be here more often. Right. Um, but uh, with your role, is it is it just maintaining what is already here, or is it also doing a lot of replantings? It's a combination of both. You can't you can't ever be stagnant as a as an arboretum. Stagnant collection is a sort of a a dying collection. Obviously, we want to preserve our our old trees, but you have to be forward thinking. Uh, the moment you stop planting, eventually that's gonna catch up to you. So we're, we're always looking for to add new, unusual varieties of plants to our collection, um, pushing the envelope on, on hardiness zones out in the garden and continuing to develop the collections in here as well. And when you're looking for new plants and what you, when you say pushing the boundaries of like the hardiness zone, are we in a zone? We're a, we're a zone seven. Oh, zone so, seven, okay. So we'll, we'll try, well, they're split into two, two sections per zone. So there's seven A and seven B. Um, we're listed as seven as B, but we've been, we've been pushing some zone eight plants in some microclimates and we've had mixed results. Obviously, that's a 10 year projection, a hardiness zone. So when you have a winter like we just had, where we had some zone six extremes, that kind of sets you back a little bit, but yeah. it's uh, sort of the trial and error of, of horticulture. And where do you go when you're looking for interesting varieties and interesting specimens to grow here at Planting Fields? Um, you wind up using a lot of, of mail order nurseries. We use uh, Forest Farm a lot in, out on the West Coast. Uh, Gosler Farms is another one, but sometimes you'll, you'll be surprised. You'll go to a local nursery and you, you kind of have it pegged as sort of a, 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 a trade, more of a trade nursery where they're typically going to have the tried and true landscape variety plants. And then you'll, you'll find like the diamond in the rough there and you'll be like, I did not expect this. And, and you wind up with a great plant to add to your collection. So then you're constantly doing, you know, mail order, you're looking around at local nurseries. Do anybody ever, does anybody ever approach you and say, hey, I got this interesting thing, or yes. does that just not happen? Yeah, you, it's, it comes from involvement in, in different plant organizations. Um, people run like test programs to try to, to gather information on a specific plant. Um, whether it's the Holly Society or the Rhododendron Society, a breeder will come up with a, a, a new variety and just want to gather as much information as possible so they'll they'll get them out that way or oftentimes because we're a collection people uh, homeowners in the area will be like oh we, I have this great tree I'd love for you guys to have it because you're going to appreciate it as much as we do a lot of times we don't take them because more often than not we already have it um, so but those are some of the ways that we come to get plants from uh, unconventional sources. Well, I know that the planting fields actually has such a rich history, and I'm hoping you might be able to fill me in on some of the some of that. It's a it's the former estate of William Robertson Co. Uh, he was a self-made uh, man in the insurance industry, and um, he built the Co. Hall Mansion here and developed the gardens starting around 1918. And how much of, I wonder how much of that has been preserved from that original state to how much has been expanded on? We try to adhere very, very closely to, to what was, like we have areas of the garden where it's the taxis field and, and rhododendron collections. We try to adhere to that. We always will follow that sort of same motif. We won't, we won't go completely in the opposite direction. One of the examples of a, a collection that we wasn't here historically is our synoptic garden. That's a shrub and small tree collection that's roughly 
15 acres and it's organized uh, from A to Z by genus. Mm. So you'll start in the beginning with, with maples and abelia for, for Acer and you'll wind up all the way down with, with the viburnums and, and some other unusual plants, Zizifus, uh, is, you know, and the so Z that, representative and, and Zelkova. So the, the 15 acres, is it, is it, I'm imagining it's not in just one straight line, but it kind of is a, a series no, of trails. These sort of like great meandering pathways and you'll come around a corner and you'll kind of be struck by, by a plant that's, you know, completely foreign to most people. Um, we try to arrange it so that way there's sort of little hidden gems within mm -hmm. the, the garden, but there's, that's an area where we're, where we revolve plants pretty frequently because there's always, that's sort of like a, it's a combination of a trial garden and, and sort of just a, a great education tool for, for homeowners, for our student interns who come through in the season. And what are some of your, you know, now that you've taken on this position for the last mm. you know, couple of years, um, what are some of your favorite spaces in, in the Arboretum for you personally? Favorite spaces, uh, it's tough. Um, the one of my favorite spots to to kind of just you know relax is there's a a large white oak a Quercus alba located in our four squares garden which is kind of a more formal area that has uh, contains our rose garden and, and rose arbor uh, that tree is absolutely majestic it's we approximate it to be around 400 years old wow that's phenomenal that's phenomenal to see you know that preserved over so many millennia yeah. Um, but thank you so much for taking us a little bit through, you know, your daily life here and, yep. of course, the beauty of the planting fields. Yeah. All right. Thank you. But that wasn't so painful, right? No. <laughs> hey, guys. So I hope you really enjoyed that tour and seeing some of those beautiful plants and sharing in the history of the planting fields. So if you like these episodes, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to be notified when the next episode hits, then you hit the little alarm button nearby. And of course, if you'd like to follow along on my journey, you could do so on my blog at homesteadbrooklyn.com and on Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. See you next week.